Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm going to review for Homeland Season 3, Episode 1, called The Tin Man Is Down. Um, yeah, usually I don't review Homeland, but I binged this show throughout the summer. I've been loving it. It's one of my favorite shows right now. And uh, I decided to at least review the the season premiere and see if you guys like it. If you guys do like it, um, I'll try to review it every Sunday. Uh, I'm just trying to organize my TV reviewing stuff, like what you guys want, what you guys don't want. So I'm trying to do some season premiere stuff that I know I watch, uh, but I want to see how you guys enjoy it. So let's talk about Homeland. Um, a lot of stories are going on. Um, we get, of course, from last season, Brody did leave. Everyone knows he's a terrorist now, or did he Did he really kill everybody? Um, that's probably going to be a big question in season three. Um, so we get to see that... Uh, that aftermath of that. Um, Saul, he becomes the director of the CIA, so does power go to his head because of this? Um, and we see in this episode, yeah, it kind of does go to his head. Um, so let's talk about Saul's story first. Um, he, he's trying to do uh, everything in his power to try to keep the CIA in balance because uh, the government doesn't want the CIA to exist anymore because they believe uh, that they did the wrong, th wrong thing throughout the whole Brody situation. So, uh, in the end of this episode, we get to see Saul um, is questioned by, uh, you know, the Senate and the committee, and he says uh, that this is pretty much all Carrie's fault. And he's like, yes, yes, um, our officer was having a relationship with Brody, and she's bipolar. Of course, they didn't say her name, but yeah, Saul pretty much uh, stabbed Carrie in the back and said that it's pretty much all Carrie's fault, and he didn't know anything about it. Uh, but Carrie's story, um, he, she's also has the aftermath of this whole Brody stuff. Um, I feel like in this episode she's very alone, especially after the whole Saul thing. Um, she's very alone. She, she has sex with this random guy in this episode. Um, she's off her meds, which is something that happens here. And, uh, everyone's gonna start not believing her, because they're gonna find out she's the person that slept with Brody, and, um, who's bipolar. So, where does she go from here? I mean, her whole life really was the CIA and now her twisted relationship with Brody and now that's all up in the air and then also Saul was a great friend to her friend uh so what's gonna happen with that uh and that's very interesting we saw a little with Quinn and it seems like he's gonna be more of a black ops type character here and I'm excited to see more of Quinn because I feel he could be a really good friend to Carrie at least in the coming attractions for the rest of the season I feel like he could be a good friend because I feel like that's what Carrie needs right now um, will Carrie stay off her meds? I think this is a big season for her disease also. Like, what will happen? Is it, will she stay off her meds? Will she go back to the hospital because of this? Um, I think that's a big question. Um, and now the biggest question, or the biggest fact from this episode, is that Brody wasn't in this episode. Now, did this make this episode fail? Did it do better? Was he needed? Um, personally, I think... Brody could have been in this episode, um, in my opinion, I think it would have been better if we saw Brody. But maybe not, because we actually saw the aftermath of his family um, after we find out that Brody was a terrorist, and everyone knows, so the aftermath of the family was a big part here. Uh, but the writers were questioning even to have the family in this episode. So, see, I thought that would have been a big mistake, because I think something that makes it you know, I guess okay that Brody wasn't in this episode was to find out what is happening to the family. Uh, so I'm very happy that they decided to keep with that. Uh, but the family is most of Dana's story. Now a lot of people might be upset about this, a lot of people hate Dana. Personally, I like and hate Dana at the same time because I think in this episode that's a, there's really um, a complete story and a, a complete uh, reference to that because we get this horrible story arc with her sexting this this boyfriend. I think Homeland writers just stop making Dana have a boyfriend because that's usually the horrible story uh, for her. The interesting thing with Dana is she's the character that could be the Isa to uh, Brody, really, because it's his real daughter. Um, and I always felt that, and I think that has always been the best thing about Dana was that really that's the character that could ground Brody. That's really his grounding character. Um, and in this episode, we get to see um, that Dana almost c commits suicide. Now, uh, her mother is very um, passionate about this, you know, trying to get her better and uh, believes, you know, what should we do for Dana? Of course, all this, the craziness with the paparazzi and everything um, is making life hard on them. And that's really the aftermath of the Brody family. It's, 
the aftermath of finding out your father is a, a terrorist and the whole world knowing this. Uh, so your family is in shame right now. Uh, so I thought that was very interesting. Of course, we didn't get anything with Chris except these little Snickers and one-liners, which... It's like, why is Chris even in this show? Uh, but yeah, going back to Dana, I think uh, her, it was a very interesting story about um, the aftermath of how she dealt with um, Brody being a terrorist and hopefully throughout the season, season finding out she, how she deals with this. But the whole boyfriend story is kind of stupid and I don't know why they're doing that. So that's what I've always felt with Dana. She could be such, a, a, such an interesting character, but there's always that sexting story and those other side stories that make it annoying. Uh, and then the grandmother saying, like, oh, she didn't actually try to commit suicide. If she if she wanted to, she would have. Um, I think that's obviously going to scar Dana a little. I'm really excited to see where her arc goes besides the boyfriend story, which I don't really like. Um, and I really like Jessica's performance here, too, kind of being that worried mother, like, where do I go here? We don't have money. My husband, well, yeah, my husband uh, betrayed us. Our family betrayed the country. Where do we go here? And I think Jessica really did have one of the best performances in this episode. Uh, but yeah, very interesting planting the seeds. It wasn't the best premiere. I think it would have been a little bit better if Brody was in this episode, but I understand why they didn't have him either. But I'm glad that they kept the Brody family here, because I think that could be a very interesting story, and hopefully we dig deeper to so not just a question of how do they react to the world knowing, but how do they react to their husband slash father being a terrorist, because we haven't really tackled that question in this episode yet, and hopefully they tackle that, and it seems like with the coming attractions, they will. And I'm still questioning, how does Dana end up being kind of praying uh, in, um, you know, Muslim religion is just because she is connected to her father somehow. I'm really interested in that also, so uh, that's a scene I'm looking forward to. Uh, but yeah, all the characters have very interesting story uh, stories, especially, again, with Saul, going back to him. him. Is power going to his head? Is that why he betrayed Carrie? You know, there's a lot of betrayal here and a lot of, I think, backstabbing too. Uh, so very interesting episode and I'm very excited to see what the next uh, season, br well, this coming season brings us. Uh, but tell me in comments below, what did you think about the episode? Uh, did you think it was a strong episode? I thought it was a good episode. I don't think it was a strong episode, but it still gets me uh, pretty pumped up for the season. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed, and please tell me in the comments below if you want me to continue reviewing Homeland, because I will if you guys tell me if you guys want it. Um, so yeah, this is Comic Uno. Guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for Comic Uno and the Rant Situations, and I'll see you guys later. And guys, don't forget to like my Facebook page, and I'll see you guys later.